Hey guys, Darkflame here and welcome to Build Diaries. In this series, I will play a new build that I've never tried before in the start of a league and take it as far as I can, showing you all how I go from leveling to endgame with one character. In Path of Exile's latest expansion, Ultimatum League, I wanted to play a cheap, strong league starter that could clear content on a budget. I also had a feeling I wanted to play a minion build as they always looked interesting to me. As a result, I was drawn towards a dominating blow Herald of Purity Guardian as I had seen many videos that commented on how strong it was. I've drawn a lot of inspiration for this video from Balor Mage's guide. I will link his online guide in the description below. Before League start, I practiced with this character by racing through the axe, attempting to find the best setup for it. The recommendations that I will be showing here are the results of that testing. The other details of the build, such as the ascendancy order, skill tree setup, and bandits, can be found in Balor Mage's guide in the description. As this portion of the video is meant to help people new to this build, people who are interested to see how I killed Cirrus on a budget can skip this. At level 28, we will get Dominating Blow from Maramoa. Be sure to socket this into your equipment somewhere so you can start gaining experience. At level 31, we will make the transition into Dominating Blow. Make sure to complete the quest Fixture of Fate to get all the required gems. We pick up Summon Carrion Golem at level 38. If you have the links, socket this gem with your Summon Holy Relic to get more damage. You'll also get Multi Strike at this time. This will replace the 4 flick on your dominating blow after Fortify and Feeding Frenzy. Once we allocate the Keystone, Call to Arms at around level 42, we will use Enduring Cry to improve our survivability. Be sure you use your left click to cast a skill so that you never have to think about when to war cry. Our gem links will mostly remain the same for the rest of the axe. If you want, you can buy more gems from Lily and start leveling them so that you will be in great shape by the time we kill Kitava. By the time you hit maps, your gem setup should look like this. Now I will show you the gear that I used to kill Cirrus at Awakener level 5. This was by far the cheapest character I used to kill him with a budget of less than 2 exalts. The footage will show me dying one time, but I was able to do a deathless in Awakener level 6 with the same gear. There are also people that killed Cirrus with even worse gear than I had. I bought the Scourge, which is our best in slot weapon for this build, for only 80 chaos about 5 days into the leak. If you progress slower or start later, the price of the item will be far cheaper. You can also just use any weapon with high physical damage rolls and attack speed, while the modifier minions will deal percent increased damage. Try to get any shield with life or resistances such as the one shown here. Emperor's Vigilance is a good, cheap, unique option here thanks to its good stats as well as spell block. It also gives you the Glancing Blows keystone for free, saving you a passive point. I found a plus 2 minion helmet from an ultimatum encounter and placed my Herald of Purity into it. Skullhead is a cheap unique that does well here because it gives us life and resistances as well as survivability for our minions. If you can't get any of those, any helmet with life and resists is good enough. For my chest piece, I bought a 6 linked base for 30 chaos, spammed a few essences on it and slapped my dominating blow link into it. Alternatively, you could buy a corrupted 6 link with the correct socket colors for a wide range of prices. My gloves here only had life and dexterity, which I needed to use a scourge, and is definitely the worst piece of gear that I used. Try and look for any missing stats on this slot. One of my rings was a profane proxy, which I placed in my left ring slot to apply punishment. You can see that I had the ring in the wrong area during the fight, since Sirius wasn't shocked. Punishment is a great all-around curse, causing the cursed enemy to take increased damage when below 50% health, and debilitating them when they hit. Debilitate reduces their movement speed and damage dealt. 
The other ring I used was just a ring with life and resistances. For the boot selection, I bought a well rode rainbow stride for 5 chaos, since I knew I'd be using it later. It also gives us some well needed spell block at the cost of lack of flat life. You can either use the same boots or use any boots that give life, resists, and movement speed. Lastly, my belt just had life and resists. You can't really get any more basic than that. The flasks that I used were a Panicked and Divine Life Flask of Staunching, a Basalt Flask, a Granite Flask, a Quartz Flask, and a Quicksilver Flask of Adrenaline. Be sure you get Curse, Freeze and Chill, and Ignite Immunity on these flasks. It doesn't really matter where you put the affixes. In my passive tree, I used an 8 passive minion damage large cluster jewel with 3 notables. To get this, I sniped an I level 50 8 passive minion damage large cluster jewel for 30 chaos on trade. Then I used a few reforge attack with attack mods being more common in harvest to get all 3 notables. However, as long as you get any minion damage large cluster jewel with notable rotten claws, you will be fine. Almost all of my empty jewel sockets had ghastly eye jewels with life and minion attack and cast speed on them, which I rolled with reforge life in harvest. Lastly, I took this jewel socket and placed a fortress covenant jewel into it. I sniped it off of trade for about 15 chaos. This jewel gives our minions increased damage and block chance, but it converts any notables in its radius into a node that causes our minions to take increased damage. This is why I placed this jewel in the particular slot. You can also drop this entirely if you can't get the jewel though. Now I'm going to talk about the upgrades you can make to this build when you earn a bit more currency. The most important upgrades in this build are going to be the Circle of Guilt Rings. You want the Herald of Purity has reduced reservation and Sentinels of Purity deal increased damage mods on both rings. Each ring cost me about 1.5x a week into the league. Once you have both rings, you can unspec out of the Discord Artisan wheel here and start investing into Cluster Jewels, which will give great boosts to your minions. Two medium Cluster Jewels I used in this build were this Jewel, which is geared towards minion damage, and this Jewel, which helps survivability. You ideally want to mix it up according to your needs. Once you obtain two small Cluster Jewels with Notable Blessed, which has Chaos Resistance, you can drop this entire side of the tree and use the passive points for these jewels. Use your remaining points to get as much life as possible on the tree. Ideally, in your shield slot, you will want a recover percent life on block shield. This affix can be obtained via a warlord or shaper influenced shield. I crafted this one by buying a base for 30 chaos, then spamming reforged life with life mods being more common in harvest until I got the mod. To boost minion damage further, you can look for the mod Minions Deal Percent Increased Damage, which can be found as a prefix in a Redeemer Influenced Ring or as a craft prefix on your gloves. In your helmet, the ideal setup would be an I level 86 Bone Helmet with the Elder Influence. This allows you to get the modifiers plus 3 to socketed minion gems, and socketed gems are supported by level 20 minion damage. However, this can cost a lot of currency. I instead opted for a normal bone helmet with plus 2 to socketed minion gems. Overall, this build is cheap, tanky, and very fun to play. However, there are some things I don't like about this build. Mainly, when we can't spawn any additional Sentinels of Dominance or Sentinels of Purity, we essentially do no damage. This can get us in trouble sometimes in ultimatum encounters, when the next wave of monsters will not spawn until almost all of the current monsters have died. I also had to adjust to the playstyle of convocating your minions into a monster that you want dead. This mechanic, along with resummoning your utility minions, is easy to learn and get used to though. Experienced summoner players should have no problem with this whatsoever. As you can see in the various clips in the video, I chose to transition into the CI version of this build. I was only able to do this once I reached level 95. This required a complete reshuffle of my gear and passives as well as some more currency. I also plan to transition into a pure Herald of Purity version of this build once I get the required gems. I intend to show you all how I completed these transitions in a future video. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.